back mounted doubles versus side mount. Jacket style versus back plate and wing. Dry suit versus wet suit. Rebreather versus open circuit. All of these topics start controversies in the scuba industry. But the number one topic that really takes the cake and starts more arguments than anything else is the metric system versus the Imperial. And in today's video, we're going to be specifically talking about the differences between the metric system and the Imperial system. We're going to be looking at some pros and cons of each, and we're going to talk about why neither one are truly accurate. But hopefully today's video is going to help you decide which one's going to be best for you because our goal at the end of the day is to make you the best diver that you can be. Whether you're a recreational, a technical, a commercial, a public safety diver, or whether you're just a diver that wants to go out and have as much knowledge as possible. Today's video hopefully is going to help you determine which one's going to be right for you. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now if you didn't already know, my name is Brian Stafford. I'm an instructor trainer with SSI and I teach not only recreational classes, I also teach technical classes and I teach public safety slash commercial classes as well. And one of the topics that always comes up is, is the metric system better than Imperial or is the Imperial system more accurate than the metric system and which one should I use? Well, as an instructor, I personally use both and in today's video, I am going to be explaining why I use both. But which one do I push towards my students? Which one do I tell them they're going to have to learn if they're taking a class? Well, it comes down to the student and which one they prefer to learn on. Now, personally, I like both systems. One is definitely easier to do on the math. The other one is a little bit more accurate, but they both work and they are both safe to use. So it really comes down to the student and which one is going to be easier for them to learn. Now, I would encourage both you as the viewers and anybody that's really watching this to learn both systems, especially if you want to be a dive professional. You see, as a dive professional, it's not really my goal or my job to tell you which one's going to be right or wrong. It's really to show you both methods so that you can be the best educated diver possible and no matter what situation you find yourself in, you're going to be able to do the math on the fly. So let's run over here to the board. Let's look at a couple of differences between both the metric and the imperial system and I'll show you some easier math that you can do to make, say, cross math between the two a whole lot simpler. Alright guys, so basically all I've got up here just for uh, a quick little demonstration for you is the atmospheric pressure chart and this is something that every single one of us have learned. We all learn it back in the open water program and we learn it in basically every course beyond that as well. Whether it's the deep diver, a solo diver, or any technical level courses, you are going to see this chart throughout about every scuba course you take. And basically the way I've got it laid out here, these first two levels or columns here are going to be the imperial system. And yes, when we talk about imperial, we have to use two different calculations because we're basing it off whether we're in, say, salt water or are we in fresh water. With the metric system, it's kind of an average between the two, so we don't really have to worry about that. But let's take a quick look at the three charts, and I'll show you how to do the math so that's super easy to do. And then I'll show you when we're doing this type of calculation, which one's the easiest, but which one is more accurate. So this first level here, this is just salt water here, and the incrementation that we're going to use for the math is going to be 33 feet. So every 33 feet that we go down, we go through a new atmospheric pressure. Example here would be 33 feet, we're going to be at two atmospheres. We understand we have the constant atmosphere at the surface. We descend 33 feet, then we're at two atmospheres. If we go another 33 feet to 66 feet, then of course we're going to be at three atmospheres. And it's super easy math to do. You simply just take your depth, divide it by 33, add one to it, and you can find out what atmospheric pressure you're at. Now, same thing over here with the Imperial system for freshwater, with the exception is we're going to be using incrementations of 34 feet. And the reason we do that with freshwater, the water is not as, as dense as what it is, is in salt water. So obviously we're going to have to change it up a little bit. So now basically here at the surface, I'm at one atmosphere. Every 34 feet I go down, I go through a new atmosphere. So at 34 feet, I'm at two atmospheres. 68 feet, I'm at three atmospheres, so forth and so on. And the math is the exact same. The only thing I changed was 33 over to 34. So it's depth divided by 34 plus one. Now the metric system is a little bit easier to do because all you got to know is your tens. Tens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, all the way down. So basically every 10 meters, 
we're going to increase our atmospheric pressure by one bar. And we don't really call it ATA here. We simply call it bar. But you need to understand that bar is the exact same thing as ATA or absolute atmospheric pressure. So basically here, I've got one atmosphere at the surface. Every 10 meters I go down, I've increased my bar by one. So 10 meters is two bars, 20 meters is three bars, so forth and so on. And the math is even easier here. It's just 10 divided by 10 or whatever it is divided by 10 plus one. Now, another thing that I really wanna talk about with the metric system really quick is this. You don't actually have to do the math. So the formula that we're gonna use is depth divided by 10 plus one. So whatever your depth is, divide it by 10, add one to it, and you're gonna get your bar, or your atmospheric pressure. But with the metric system, it's a lot simpler than that. We don't even have to do the math. Whatever um, depth you're at, let's say that we're at a depth of 37 meters. Now I can do the math. 37 divided by 10 plus one is super easy to do. Or I can simply move my decimal one spot and add one to that front number. So 37 meters would actually be 4.7 bar. So think of 37 with a decimal at the end of that. So 37 decimal, move the decimal in between. So basically I move it over one and I simply add one to that front number and it's even easier math. Regardless of what your depth rating is in meters, you can simply do the math without physically doing the math. Move your decimal space one uh, one place to the left, add one to that front number, and it's super easy to do. So based off this alone, as you can see, the metric system is going to be a whole lot simpler to do. However, it's not going to be truly accurate simply because in the imperial system, we really have to worry about are we dealing with fresh water or are we dealing with salt water? And let me take you over here to another calculation and show you what I mean by that. All right, guys, so what I've got wrote up here is a formula that we're going to use or basically a plan that we're going to use to dive down to, say, 100 feet or to be exact, 30.3 meters. And yes, I know somebody's going to say, Brian, 100 feet is 30 meters. No, 30 meters is 99 feet, not 100 feet. If we want to be accurate when we do these calculations, obviously, we need to calculate exactly what that is. So obviously we're going to get some different numbers here and I'm going to show you why there's a lot of rounding up and rounding down that can be done and why one system may not be exactly accurate. So this top line, of course, is going to be the metric system. And basically I'm going to 100 feet, which is 30.3 meters, otherwise known as 4.03 bar or 4.03 atmospheres. And of course, if you did the math based off, say, the magic circle, if you're not familiar with that, I'm going to link it up top for you. But that's how we calculate what is the best mix of nitrox for a given depth. In this case, the best mix of nitrox is going to be somewhere between 34% and 35%. Now, how do we get that number? Well, in short, you take your partial pressure of O2 that you don't want to exceed, in this case, 1.4. We're going to divide it by our bar or our atmospheric pressure, and it's going to come up to a 0.347. Now, whether you take that 7 and round up this 4 to 35%, or you completely ignore it and round down, it's going to be up to you. Typically, what I do, if it's a 4 or less, I round down. If it's a 5 or more, I round up. So in this case, for a 30.3 meter dive or a 100 foot dive, the best mix is going to be 35%. Now I'm going to skip this middle line really quick and let's drop down to the bottom line because in the metric system, it's really going to be pretty accurate to say the uh, imperial system with saltwater incrementations. So here at 100 feet, same thing as 30.3 meters, that is still 4.03 atmospheres or 4.03 bar. And of course, I'm gonna get the exact same number, 0.347, which I'm gonna round up for me personally to 35%. If you feel wanna be a little safer, you can round it down to 34. So as we can see, the metric system is gonna line up perfect with say the imperial if you're only doing saltwater calculations. But here lies the problem. Here where we're diving most of the time, it's all fresh water. So let's do some fresh water calculations. At 100 feet, that happens to be 3.9 atmospheres. It is not four atmospheres. It is not four bar. It is 3.9. So if we did the math there, simply 1.4 divided by 3.9, it's going to come up to 0.358. So on the low side, you could round down to 35% or you could allow that 8 to jump that 5 to a 6 and round up to 36%. So now if we said we were going to 100 feet 
and somebody says, well, I want to use the best mix for that, and they calculated a 36, their dive buddy is going to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We can't breathe that 36%. We can only breathe that 34% at that given depth. So as you can see, there is going to be some major discrepancies here between the metric system and the imperial system. And once again, it's going to be your decision on which one you choose to use. All right, guys, just to reiterate a little bit about the discrepancies between, say, the metric and the imperial system and how does it apply to us as divers when planning dives. Basically, what I've got here are the SSI dive tables. And if you are not familiar with the dive tables, we have a complete video series on the dive tables. Definitely go check them out because I think it'll make you a little bit better educated as a diver. And you'll also see that these are not that scary. They're not that difficult to read. But basically, what I want to show you here on this chart is some of the discrepancies between whatever mixture you're going to be breathing based off what maybe you learned in your, say, nitrox course and based off the math that we've seen on the board thus far. So if you're not familiar with the SSI dive tables, they are super easy to read. Basically, we're going to have three columns here, and these are our depth columns. So if you're breathing, say, air or nitrox 32 or nitrox 36, you're going to have different depth ratings there. But the cool thing about this chart is I call it a cheat sheet because you really don't have to do that much math. Um, for example here, let's say that we're breathing 32% and we go to a depth of 46 feet. As you can see, it's going to say my partial pressure of O2 at 46 feet is going to be 0.77. So you don't really have to calculate if you're using, say, a generic blend such as, say, 32 or 36. Or you can use the equivalent air depth formula and use the air tables and do the exact same thing. But let's go back over here just really quick. And because there was a discrepancy there, we were going to 100 feet. But based off, are we using the metric or the imperial? And if you're using the imperial, based off, are you in freshwater or saltwater? We see that there was a range for what is the best mix. That range was 34% all the way up to 36%. So let's go on that high side and say, we're diving in freshwater. We're going to 100 feet. And the best mix, of course, is 36%. Well, if I'm using the tables to make that calculation... And I come over here to the 36% column and I go all the way down to 100 feet, you will notice that there is no 100 feet. It's either 94 feet or 106. So what are the rules of tables? Well, obviously we simply round up. So I'm not gonna be using the 94, I'm gonna be using the 106 feet. And you'll notice my partial pressure is gonna be 1.52. So that's a lot higher than that 1.4. And if you remember from your nitrox class, we don't want to exceed that 1.4 partial pressure of O2. So there's gonna be a discrepancy here. The math tells us that for freshwater in the imperial system, we can use 36%, but the dive table says we can't. So what do we do? Do we plan with our computer now? Well, let's see what our computer tells us. So basically I have my computer set up here and you'll notice that I've got it set to 36%. And of course it is set to fresh water on my particular computer. And you'll notice that the maximum operating depth is only 97 feet. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me go back into pre-dive here for you. And it says enriched air, 36%, maximum operating depth of 97 feet. And of course, I do have it currently set up for fresh water. So there are going to be tons of discrepancies, whether you're using metric, whether you're using imperial, whether you're in fresh water or salt water, whether you're using the dive tables or you're using the dive computer, you're going to have to make a decision. Which one do you like the best? All right, guys, so let's take a break from the math really quick, and let's talk a little bit about equipment maintenance and equipment mechanics and how things actually work if you're a service technician, um, and how does that relate to the metric versus the imperial system? Well, in this gauge here, this is an intermediate pressure gauge from XS Scuba, and this is one of the ones that we use whenever we're setting up a regulator, whether we're setting up, say, the intermediate pressure or even the cracking pressure. A lot of times you're going to see gauges like this that will read both metric and the imperial system. And I'll show you really quickly on this one. If it'll zoom in, you will notice that around 10 bar, that's somewhere near 150 PSI, give or take a little bit. And when I say that is a lot of times when we service regs, there's going to be a gap or a range that we set your reg up. All of the balanced regs from Mares are going to be set up between 9.8 and 10.2. And of course, that is non-cold water diving regs. Cold water diving regs, we set them a little bit lower than that. But you'll notice that there's a range there. Well, if we look at 9.8 to 10.2, that's anywhere between 140 to 150 PSI. So we can use both the metric and the imperial system whenever we're setting up a reg. And why would you use 
one over the other? Well, a lot of it's just for quick reference. If I look and I say, okay, I see the 10 on there and then I see the nine, well, what about in between? If I don't know what that in between is, well, of course I can look and say, okay, the nine's gonna be 130 PSI, the 10's gonna be 145 PSI, so somewhere in between there, I can actually use the Imperial gauge to make it a little bit easier if I'm trying to hit an exact number. But whether you choose to use the metric or the Imperial system, gauges are gonna be a, a big help to you. Speaking of gauges, XS Scuba and both Ocean Reef make a pressure gauge for divers, and I'm gonna put both of them up here for you, that read both in metric and Imperial. And if you're traveling abroad and not taking your gear, and maybe you have to rent gear that say, reads one way or the other, a lot of shops have actually switched over to these gauges because they're going to be universal. You can read both the metric and the imperial system as well, and it makes great for, say, uh, training regs and things like that for local shops. Even our shop here, we have started to transition all of our, say, imperial gauges over to the gauges that will read both imperial and the metric system too. So getting back to, is one easier than the other? Is one more accurate than the other? One thing that I will tell you, a lot of stuff in scuba is theoretical at best. We say this is gonna be the best mix for this depth, but that's based off whatever partial pressure you're breathing. And we say, yeah, 30 meters is really 99 feet, but we calculate it as 100. Guys, there are a lot of theory-based things in scuba that are theoretical at best, and we've just got to decide what's going to be right for us. As far as me personally, between metric and imperial, well, I simply use both. I teach both. I use both. It really depends on what I'm doing. A lot of times in a teaching scenario, I'll simply let the students decide which method they want to learn. Now, I still teach both of them, but whichever one they want to learn, that's the one that we focus on. As far as what I use, a lot of times I will use use the metric system if I'm diving with a bunch of my tech friends or if I'm teaching say tech level courses but if it's just basic recreational courses or say even the public safety course I will simply use the imperial and as we saw up here on the board there is going to be some discrepancies between the imperial and the metric when it comes to some of the calculations and especially in the public safety field a lot of times in the public safety field especially here we're dealing with freshwater calculations and if we're calculating what's called lift theory a lot of times we have to use the imperial system over the metric system, especially when we get into the deeper side of the public safety class and we start talking about courtroom testimony and things like that. We have to be able to use certain terminologies in court and show the math in court because when it comes to investigations and things like that, it does have to be as exact or as, as close to exact as possible, not a lot of rounding up and rounding down and things of that sort. So there's like a huge pros and cons to both sides, both metric and imperial. Personally, once again, as an instructor, I use both, I teach both. As a, a diver in general, I use both and I like both. I don't really have a preference one way or the other for my students. I simply let them decide what's going to be best for them. And even for you guys, the viewers, you simply just need to decide which method is going to be the easiest for you to learn and make your diving a little bit more comfortable and a little bit safer when you're underwater and simply go with that. If you do want to be the best diver that you can, learn both methods. There's absolutely nothing wrong with both methods. For all my instructor candidates, I teach teach them both methods and they are required to know both methods because as an instructor our job is to teach safe scuba not to teach philosophies and of course if they have one of their students come in they want to learn the imperial and all they know is the metric they're not going to be the best instructor for that student and vice versa so as an instructor I believe that you need to know both you need to be fluid with both and you shouldn't really concern which one you use and even as a diver I would encourage you to learn both methods to see which one's going to be best but also so that you can work with other divers say during the planning stage of any dive but guys I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope it kind of opens your eyes there is no right way or wrong here. It's simply what simply works for you. And once again, if you're an instructor, you need to really be able to do both. But guys, if you like this type of content, you want to see more, give me a big thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. Which one do you use and why do you choose one method over the other? But that's going to do it for today's video. As always, take care. God bless. I'll see you in the next one.